when you look at the stadium, like, I can't believe we get to call plays here, bro. Yeah. And your mom is in heaven watching yeah. every game, probably trying to help out as much as she can. <laughs> We're at her place that yeah. she loves the most. When my parents split, um, I was six years old around the time, and so we, me and my siblings moved from home to home. We are different places, from a grandpa to aunties. And luckily, you know, my Uncle Mancella and uh, my Auntie Lynette, that's our Fessy's parents, were able to help basically co-parent with my dad and help take care of us. We didn't have, uh, you know, maternal presence, and so having Lynette be that for us was huge. Tom had his four, and I had my two then at the time they arrived. So there were six kids. We were so young when we all lived together, but we, and they never let us forget that, you know, as we got older. You're my brother, you're my sister, your mom took care of us, your mom's our mom. We had a rough time dealing with my parents' divorce and my mom not being around, and, and so it was hard for us, and she easily moved into that role and embraced it. That was one of those moments where I felt really broken, and I felt like um, she was an answer to, to my prayers. In my relationship with Lynette, I learned early that her mother had some kind of a rare illness. And I didn't know that it was something that could be passed down, you know, I had no idea. To everybody else, it would be hard to notice the changes because they were very subtle things, so unless you knew her really well, as it progresses, it's pretty obvious. You can't even have a conversation. They thought that it was something like early onset Alzheimer's. It wasn't until my sister started developing the same symptoms about four years ago. It's a simple blood test to find out that she has a genetic mutation. She has a disease called prion disease. You, you talk about a, a, a fantastic personality and then Prions just hit, and it was such an early age for her where she just became forgetful. And then just some of the little things, her mind started to slip, and it's, it's not recognizing her kids. Not rem remembering their name. Um. The disease really just robs you of everything. All of the activities that you can do for yourself that we maybe take for granted. All I knew was taking care of my mom. My sisters would bathe her and, you know, brush her hair in the morning, and I would, you know, help feed her and then walk her out to the van that would then take her to the rest home throughout the day because us, our children, her caregivers, were going to school. That was just our whole life. That's how I knew my mom, is, is, is that she was our mom, but she, we were taking care of her. And Fessy was probably about you know, seven or eight years old when it started to get really bad like that. And Fessy was just our little runt brother that loved to make her laugh. <sighs> brought a lot of, it brought a lot of joy into the house. I felt like he was robbed of, of a wonderful mother. And um, I thought it was important that I, I do my best. Um, to show him how she, she blessed me. And so that's been, uh, <clears throat> that's what I've tried to do for him and his siblings. Um, try to do the best I can of, of teaching them some of the lessons that she taught us. And most of it was just pure kindness and just such a sweet person, um, even when we weren't being the best. You look at a disciple of Christ, I think she's a perfect example of it. I am just so grateful because if Galani and his siblings didn't have that experience, we wouldn't have had anybody to be able to tell us the kind of mom she was, the kind of mom she wanted to be and could have been had the disease not taken her. I'm so grateful for that. I'm here because of because of you and TJ. You guys gave me something that I was never able to get from my mom, from Lynette. And she gave you guys something that you guys were never able to get. And I think, you know, Lynette's the connecting piece to that. 
she must be so happy, you know, to see them being able to work together and coach together at BYU. I mean, she really did love that school. Everyone needs an escape sometimes, and everyone's is, everyone's is different. And I think a lot of, at that time, a lot of my mom's escapes was, was BYU football. And that, I mean, I, I wasn't there, but you read the, the, the entries, you bring it to life, the image of you sitting next to her and, and listening to a game, compared to now, like you and I on the sideline, being involved is just, it's, it's crazy how you can go from, from one end to the other like that. You know, and all the things that have happened in between and the sacrifices to connect those two images, it's, it's divine. This, this is not a coincidence. Think of all the wonderful people that have stepped foot on that grass and that have sat in these stands and all of them have a wonderful story to tell and it's an honor for us to look at your mom, my aunt, our grandfather, our, all our families. You look at everything that's happened and, and where we're at now, and how can you not be uh, thankful, but just mindful for all the hard work that people have made for us to be here in these seats. In the grand scheme of things, that we're all connected through a game of football. Our stories are not any different than a lot of others. It just happens that we get to call plays on Saturday, but when it all comes down to it, we're all fans. We're all fans of this wonderful place that, that changes people's Combine that with the gospel, it's even better. It becomes eternal. I think that's going to be one of my first questions I ask her in the next life is, I never had a conversation with her. I never got to, you know, see, see certain emotions out of her, but just kind of ask her, what do you think, Mom? How was it from your seat? Did you enjoy it? 